Hi, I'm Linda Giuliani, and I welcome you to North Madison Congregational Church's Tuesdays in the Garden. This little old house we bought knowing that we were going to have to have some place to live after we, after we moved out of our last parsonage and we loved it because it had garden space. And as we walk up the driveway, I, I wanted to show you all of these green leaves on these rose bushes, which started off as five tiny little rose bushes several years ago. And I'll do a garden tour a little bit later on in the season to show you what they look like blooming. But as we come to the back of the house, this is where our gardens are. And that was one of the things, aside from the fact that this is an antique house and we've always loved the antique houses, the property was what endeared us to this place. So we have an upper level and a lower level. And as you can see, this little area over here is a little potting area where I have all of these annuals and some perennials which have to be planted and potted. Some of the pots I put up in, in this area, which is shady by my porch here, this area features ferns because it's in the shade. So we have a uh, Christmas fern here and a sweet little mouse ears hosta. Don't you love that? I think that's so cute. And a Japanese fern. And this wonderful big rock, which probably was here before the house was. I like to think of maybe Native American people grinding their corn in that little hole. Now, of course, the birds use it for a bird bath. And then we have a Boston fern, which spends most of the year in the house, but I bring it out in the summertime. And behind here, I don't know if you can see that right behind there, that is called the Victorian ladies fern. And a wild dicentra in the front. And these beautiful azaleas. Are not azaleas gorgeous? I love the color. And then, we have a little spring garden over here, which is kind of going by now, but it's the first thing that comes out um, in March, and I love looking out of my window and when we're eating breakfast and seeing everything come up. And so we had, we had uh, forget-me-nots and bleeding heart and a brunera, which is a, a bleeding, um, sorry, uh, which is a forget-me-not family. And I just potted up this cute little escargot begonia. It shoots out a little flower later on, but I think the leaves are fabulous. They look just like snails, don't they? And we have candy tuft, which just went by, and some coral bells, and a beautiful columbine. Isn't this pretty columbine? I bought that at Stop and Shop last year. And it came back and it is doing so well. Then as we come by the porch, I have a little tiny garden with only three flowers in here. Oh, and a couple of stray daisies. But there are chrysanthemums which come back and spread all over the place. But I love them because they are wonderful for picking bouquets. Um, we have evening primrose, which grew crazy in here after I accidentally brought one plant up in something else one year. And then all my pink lily of the valley are, are going by. Those were from my grandmother. And how fun it is, isn't it, to have flowers in your garden that remind you of people that you love 
On the other side of the porch here, we have um, a little herb garden, which is actually atop our well. We have city water now, but underneath this black pot with the petunias is a hand dug well, which is um, amazing to look at. We had this big piece of bluestone put there a few years ago for safety reasons, but this little herb garden has a lady's mantle, which is huge, but look at how pretty the beaded water is on all of the leaves. And then we have a little teensy rosemary here because I love rosemary. And chives. And some winter savory under here, which is wonderful in stews. And a great huge sage, which is way too big, but I forgot to prune it early. And some, um, some lavender. And then on this fence, a few years ago, I planted one climbing rose called New Dawn. And this has expanded all the way over there. And in another three weeks or a month will be full of pink blossoms and just so beautiful. All this brown area, of course, will be filled with a lot of those annuals you saw over there. We have the lamium. Don't you think those are pretty leaves? And a crane's bill geranium. And my little path to my angel who sits and watches over the garden and reminds me of all the people that are no longer with me but whose love remains. Another thing you see in all my gardens is feverfew growing wherever it wants to grow, as well as sedum. My grandmother had sedum everywhere, so that reminds me of her. Feverfew I just love because it's daisy, a tiny, tiny little daisy. And I love daisies in any form. Where the new dawn rose ends, this is just green leaves now, but that is a bonica rose, and that will also be beautiful in another month or so. And pansies, which came back. And here's an immortality iris, just like Martha Nichols showed us last week. Wonderful because it also blooms in October. And now we'll head down to the lower level. In the lower level of the backyard is where I have a garden around that shed, which is sort of falling down, but provides a nice backdrop for the gardens. Underneath the wall here, we have Siberian iris, which is blooming nicely now. And then in this garden, all kinds of perennials are poking up. All of this silver is Artemisia, which also takes over. But I love it. I try to keep it somewhat contained, but it's so pretty in bouquets and pretty in the fall to pick and, and dry. And here's a knockout rose, which really will be a beautiful knockout in a while. And here's another geranium, which is going to have a beautiful blue flower. All these tiny little plants growing back there that you see, those little green ones, are a perennial ageratum, which comes um, in bloom in October. And anybody who wants any, just come on over. You will probably hate me after a while because it will be invasive, but it is so pretty also in bouquets. Then we have
have catmint and more evening primrose and shasta daisies coming up and a very healthy veronica plant which i forgot that i planted last year but seems to be doing well and here's a little rose bush that i bought in the grocery mart you know a grocery store for about five dollars and put it in the garden and it's happy and we have lamb's ears next to this rock and a huge flower which I let grow there because I had no idea what it was. I think it's a weed. I'll probably pull that out. But um, then we have four different colors of a stilby, which will be beautiful in another month or so. So we have to do two garden tours, I think, all of us who have these spring tours, because you'll have to come back and see everything when it really is in bloom. But there'll be white a still be, pale pink a still be, a rose color a still be, and a very dark cranberry a still be. And that's a mandevilla plant, which I love because it, it grows and entwines itself on some strings that I will put up toward the top of the shed. and. As the summer goes on, we'll have flowers that grow all the way up the shed, which is kind of neat. And here we have some penstemon. I love that pretty color leaf. And here is uh, that beautiful yellow lily, the Stelladora lily, which is, is so prolific. And lots of cranesbill geranium here. And another lady's mantle. And more cat mint. And this is a pretty little blue bush whose name I was going to look up and now I forgot to do that. Um, and that blooms in late summer and is so pretty. Also nice for bouquets. And another pink knockout rose. And I'm ducking under our huge lilac here, which has just finished blooming. Oh, and here's a little Coreopsis. Look at that. A golden yellow Coreopsis. That actually came in a basket that the choir gave me a few years ago. And I'm just coming back here. Oh, I forgot about this. <clears throat> Baptisia is back here, and this is going to be a beautiful blue in another few weeks. And here's a pretty green leaf, but it's going to be yellow helianthus. And here's one of my favorite flowers. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but this is Solomon's seal. Another one where the water beads up so nicely on the leaves. The flowers are underneath. At the corner of the shed here is a huge Miss Kim lilac, which will bloom in another few weeks. Um, it's kind of nice that it blooms after, after the other lilac. Has such a sweet smell that you really can't even bring them inside because uh, it, it kind of bowls you over. I'm bringing you out to close this tour to this wonderful, I'm going to back up a little, wonderful crabapple tree that if you read music notes in the weekly music notes a couple of weeks ago, I pictured that tree in bloom and said what a marvel it is because the bottom of it is totally rotten you can see right through the tree. There are some weeds growing inside the tree. The other side looks even worse. But this is such a wonderful reminder that no matter what shape you're in or what challenges you face, just keep blooming. That's what this tree does. It reminds me of that every day that I look out. 
So that's it for now. I'll see you in another month or so when I'll do another tour. Happy gardening!